Da da dun. Boom. Da da dun. Do do do. Just let everybody. Da da dun. Da da dun. Da da dun. TGIT. Thank God it's Tuesday. Thank God it's Tony. Ah. <laughs> That's what I say when I look in the mirror in the morning. Oh, phew, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I didn't disappear in my sleep. Ooh, Dean Baxendale, that is quite... Oh, it's Brian Setzer. I was going to say, that's quite a uh, haircut, haircut you're rocking, dude. Or is that your COVID haircut? Hello, that's it. Lee Edward Foti. And Tom Hoffelder. And Kevin Sylvester. Oh, uh, it's just Lexi today. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Lexi. Lexi, tell your brother to send me your mailing address. Because I misplaced it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, actually... When Facebook has like a move to done folder, which I do once I reply to emails, and now I don't know how to access them. So just have them. Uh, Emily C. Martin's here, and Marissa Deliwu, and Emily Justa, and David Howe, along with Alfonso. <laughs> Rebecca Thunberg. Can we start? Is Molly Porridge here? I mean, we. I feel like we can't start unless... I don't know if we can start without more Molly Porridge. I feel like the other thing we could do if we wanted... What's that? ...would be to create a Drawn to Fantasy Spotify playlist. Oh, that's good. Right? Just and full of fantastical fantasies. Fantasy, like inspiring music. Yes, that sounds good. I like that. Um, you know, it's an interesting... Uh, it's going to be an interesting day. How's everybody doing today? First, I hope you guys. With you guys, how are yeah. you guys doing? How's everybody today? doing? I hope you guys are are holding up and doing okay. Um, in New England, we have good weather. Let me see if I can show you how beautiful the weather is. Look at that. We have campers in our backyard. No, it's squatters. Squatters. No, it's really just uh, Sophia. It's been. <laughs> She's living out there. She now. wants no. to live out there. That's part of. That's how seriously we take the quarantine in here in Massachusetts. <laughs> She's been hanging out in the tent. She did her homework in the tent today. It was she, fun. It's a tent. Come on, it's a tent. The weather's good. The tent's good. Long. It's something fun. Something. It's anything. I even told her I'd sleep in it. I know I'm going to regret that. Oh my but, gosh! Have fun with that. Yeah, I know. I remember when we did do that the last time, and was it 4 a.m. The birds woke oh, us up. We gosh. have nine million birds. They're so pretty during the day, but, um, you know. Not, when not you're at four o'clock in the morning in a, when you're trying to wake up. It's four thirty in the or morning. Or trying to sleep. It got freezing because the temperature dropped. Yeah. And then the dew dropped, so then we were like wet. And just, <laughs> it was just and miserable. Yeah, it was it was miserable. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope Grab you guys. The music. That's a good idea. Everybody that's good. Can pick pick a stuff. pick a tune. The uh, there's Tom Halfelder's written so many hits. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if we can pack them all there's in enough. There's the Drawn to Fantasy intro. And then there's the outro. I'm pretty sure there's going to be, like, a, a bridge. <laughs> um, whoa, someone had to go to a funeral. I'm sorry, they're scrolling up so past. Wow, they had to do it Kevin via Zoom. Kevin Sylvester said, no Amanda Palmer, the only woman to say no to Neil Gaiman. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And somebody, I saw it, the, 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 the things are zipping by. Mm -hmm. I feel so sorry for whoever had to do a funeral via Zoom. That is... <gasps> I can't even imagine oh how gosh. hard that's got to be to do. I didn't even see that. Um, yikes. Anyway, um, we're hanging in there. We're drawing. I haven't drawn at all yet today, actually. I told Angela this when uh, we were setting up. We had literally just come off a, a pretty big Zoom meeting. We've had a lot of Zoom meetings, a lot of, of Tony D books in development for TV shows and things, and that's I, unfortunately I can't say anything more until you they make their big announcement. It was a really good call. It's a lot of good calls. There's good been a lot call. of cool stuff. It's just I got to sit on my hands until until it's uh, real. Um, anyway, I didn't want to work on Kenny and the Dragon to be honest with you because my brain is so completely not there, and this actually ties in to. Um, a question I get asked a lot, which is, how do you get inspired? How do you, you know, how do you get geared up to draw? And so here I'm just coming off a Zoom call, and then I've got notes to write that Angie and I have been working on on, a, on another script, and then I have another Zoom call after that. So it's like it's like a weird day. So I wanted to show you guys one of the tricks I did. You know, last week I showed you 
how I take um, compositions and we use those compositions and we kind of stole the compositions to come up with the composition for the Kenny um, uh, thing. This is another uh, this trick. Can also be said, by the way, if you're not feeling inspired to create. Well, that's kind of yes. That's that's sorry. You're saying it better than I am. Um, <laughs> this is this is this is how we're all going to look after we <laughs> come out of quarantine. This is um, some of my Dover. I have a ton of Dover books. You guys heard me yammer on about Dover many many times. These are a couple favorites. Uh, uh, Granville, who was a French illustrator, I was actually introduced to by Barbara McClintock. She's a huge Granville fan, and it looks, you'd swear I've known Granville my whole life, and yet I don't. Um, but there's a great Dover collection that you can buy. And in fact, such a fan that I found warm ups in here from, this looks like maybe a year or two ago. By the way, Kate Blair Wheeler just started the Drawn to Fantasy play with, playlist over on Spotify. And she posted the link. Already. That is so awesome. Oh, my God. Jill Suzanne Shipman. I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that sad news. No, we're thinking of you. We're thinking. Is this is Jill the one who had to do the Zoom? Yeah. Ugh, I'm sorry, Jill. Um, anyway, Granville was a master of many things. We talked about anthropomorphing uh, uh, quite a few episodes ago. And he was a master at creating anthropomorphic characters. Here's a couple examples. Those are pretty cool. Uh, he could anthropomorph anything, not just uh, uh, animals. He actually also did inanimate objects as well. And, of course, I didn't prepare, so I can't find you something. He did insects. He did – look at this. That is just awesome. Um, anyway, and he did lots of inanimate objects too. That He does like spoons and cups. So what I do a lot of times is I just copy – I'm literally just going to find something that inspires me, and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to start with this rooster right here, because that thing is just so oh, cool. gentleman rooster. He's a gentleman rooster. He's a pugnacious rooster who insists on fighting a duel with the hare. <laughs> That's amazing. As only Granville can depict. So um, I will try to get this so it sits so you guys can see it as well. I would also um, like to tell you all, if I can interject, interject that I woke up at 7 o'clock this morning... And the first thing I did was go back to yesterday's live stream and watch it. And But I was really watching it to read the comments that you guys shared during the Mark Hamill, Jason Momoa story. And you guys were hilarious. She was literally was just laying in bed laughing. I'm like, what are you watching? <laughs> and she's like, I'm watching the feed from yesterday. It and I'm like. so funny. <laughs> you did. You were dying. Yeah, there was a couple of lines that were just so, so good. So no pencil, no drawing happen, has happened at all today. So I'm very, very cold. So I'm, um, if I can clip this, bear with me for a second. Let me see. Uh, actually, maybe this piece of tape will. Kind of uh, Is I'm, it like yoga? Like, do you start off kind of stiff and then all of a sudden you get into it and you like kind yeah, of loosen up Yeah, I mean, a bit? There, are a lot, there are traditional exercises I could be doing, Ange. Like, just real quick, um, let's see if this will hold it. Real quick um, gesture, which maybe is what I'm going to end up doing here. So I'm looking at the rooster. I want you guys to be able to see the rooster too. Um, and I'm just trying to find the, the, the flow of the line, the shape, and just kind of playing with that, really, more than anything else. That's all I'm doing. It's, Barbara Colbert copies your stuff sometimes to get inspired. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's it. This is, this is how I started, and, and this is still where Circle I go. inspiration. Yes. That's well, well done, Ange. Well said. So the other thing, it's I, like the circle of life without the dying part. Hmm? It, could, it could be, <laughs> yeah. Um, the other thing we talked about, Ange, was we were going to try to take as many questions as we could today too, because we felt like we've been we talked a lot yesterday, and so maybe we'll take we'll take questions today. Have something on your mind or something you want to talk about, and you know, you know us. You can throw us pretty much anything, and we'll uh, we'll go for it. What's that? Eleanor West said I was playing games with the family yesterday. I missed the live. What did I miss? You missed. Oh man, you missed a lot. You missed a lot. Well, it was it was it was fourth. May the fourth. May the fourth. So yes. may the fourth be with you. It was a Star Wars dedicated show. Mm -hmm. You need to just go back and watch it. We don't want to spoil anything for you. you and she finally back. told her Jason Momoa story, which actually tied in to Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And and it was just, you know, an insanity prevailed, <laughs> as it I always... I broke the, the light table. She really did. 
That's good. Okay. Why did Jason Alona, not Jason Momoa, asks, why did you choose a scorpion tail for Dante instead of the quill spiderweb tail? Ooh, I, uh, that's a great question. Um, I'm not going to grab, I don't think I have the cover here. It is a good question. Mm. Um, I'm going to come back to it because I want to show people. I, it's a great question. I, I want to show people what you're, if they're not familiar with all the things you're referencing, I want them to be able to see what you're talking about. Is that okay? Does okay. that sound good, Ange? Yes, I'll give you throw another question at you in the meantime. Yes. Brett asks, how the pumpkin do you guys track your business accounting and all of that? Do you employ someone? And is that what your studio manager does? Yes. That's exactly That's what exactly what. And we, you know, I um, went through a couple of, I had to learn, I had to figure this out because I'm not, I'm, I'm somewhat business educated, but I'm not a business major, right? We're not an accountant, and I'm why we hired and so, Yes, and I'm certainly not an accountant, and I'm organized-ish, but I'm not as organized as, so when, what would happen is when we were getting studio people to work with us, my thinking was always, oh, I, well, it started with interns, which was always great, because, you know, I'm happy to create an environment for them to feel like they can learn, but then it realized that I actually need someone to, to work and so we originally thought, oh, a creative type is what we need. And what we came to realize is, no, I'm the creative one, and we need a business and um, someone who really understands accounting and things. Yes. We worry about the business of creativity. Yeah. And then someone else can handle the business of yeah. business. Yeah. And that's really what we needed. So that's so Emily uh, was with us for many years, and she was very good and very administrative, and and she does the QuickBooks, and 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 all that stuff, and um, she organized everything. She I mean, really she, organized the studio, and she then, is a very that is I also have realized for what we need for the job description for a studio manager here organization is like number one. Because I always have, between Angela and I, we have multiple projects going on at once. They never, you never, there's, you're always gearing up one Why another one's in the middle of going on or you have multiple possibilities. That's usually what happens. So all these like television, possible TV shows and things like that, that stuff goes off and on for years. It gets hot, then it gets cold. Then it gets hot, then it gets cold. And so, um, you know, a lot of times that requires a lot of time and energy. So, well, And also we have all of the original artwork that we have is archived. That's a big part of it. When we had the Norman Rockwell Museum show the um, retrospective of Tony's work, we had to have all of the artwork archived so we knew exactly what the museum had and what we still had. So in the of that show we've loaned a lot of art yeah. both created uh, and art that we've collected from other artists to sh to various exhibitions so that's a that's a whole nother thing where you you have to you, you know you really have to keep on top of it all right Mar marissa asks where did you get your flat files from i ordered them from charrette and when i ordered the C -H -A -R -E -T -T -E. my c-h-a-r-e-t-t-e c-h a-R-E-T-T-E, yeah. charrette. Um, when I ordered them, they're modular, which means you can get them and stack them on top of each other, and they, they come with like a base. They kind of come like this. You get, a, you get a wooden little base like that, and then you order a set of drawers, and that on mine holds five. Looks like it's five drawers. Psh, 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 psh. And, then you can, and then they've got little pegs, so you can then put another set of drawers if you want, which is what I've done. So I've got ten, and then you get a table like a top topper and this all plugs into itself. Right. And then I've got three rows. So I've got 15 drawers and, um, anyway, they, um, are not cheap. <laughs> I mean, you get the metal ones. Um, I have wood and I bought them so long ago. I bought them so long ago. I want to say they, they were fairly expensive and I, um, went to buy more and the price had gone up so astronomical that I ended up, uh, we found a, a set of them on eBay. And I ended up getting them on eBay for my, my uh, other set, which is, they're fine. They're a little more beat up, which, of course, I love. But also, they, um, 
they stick. Anyway, so eBay might be the best. Unless you want brand new ones, then just buy them direct from Charette. Some pe I mean, we like the look of the wood, but a lot of people use metal files, which are also supposed to be safer if there was some kind of... Fire? Yeah. Yeah. That you have to worry about. So, so there you go. Things to think there about. There you go. Um, let's see. Okay. It looks like a lot of you guys missed Momoa Monday. Wow. Well, it's archived like all the videos. We've archived it and it's there to watch at your uh, leisure. Uh, let's see. Tony. Yes. Of which material is the core of your magic wand? Oh, that's good. Do you remember? You got your wand. Oh, I do have a wand. We went to Ollivander's. And my wand, though, is down in Florida. It's not here. I know that's probably blasphemy. I think, I think you remember is Phoenix Feather. Well, I'd Mine's take, I'll, unicorn hair. I'll take that, and I, and not, that doesn't surprise me. What's Soph's? Unicorn hair. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. She freaked out because unicorns, and then when Ollivander told her, Ollivander told her. It wasn't Ollivander. It's his, like, assistant. It's supposed to be him, I thought. No, it's not supposed to be him. If you guys have been to Harry Potter World, you know what we're talking about. I think, I thought that you was go into Ollivander's there. and you get picked. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. No, it's not him. And he yeah. No, it's not him. It's welcome to Ollivander's, but he's not Ollivander. Oh, he's like just another no character. one at, at, the, at the Harry Potter things are any... None of the people, the living human people, are any of the characters from the films. Or the books. You didn't know that? No, I knew that, obviously, because nobody else is walking around... Going and portraying on. someone else. I, they should. I love a Malfoy walking around that's like, hey, just well, with his little goons. Uh, he might need a job. <laughs> Tony just spit out his tea. <laughs> Tom Felton's like, Is that Tom? I'm going to walk over it. They'll see me. Over. Come on, the Crab butter. and Goyle. <laughs> I'll be working at the Butterbeer. <laughs> Let's go rough up some people. <laughs> the Butterbeer kiosk. Let's go shake down some kids for their wands. Could you imagine walking around and like the real Malfoy? Just There's an employee up? in the Florida one that looks a oh lot gosh. like him. He has the blonde hair and the very angular face. He's very Mal. Oh, man, he works would... on Hagrid's roller coaster. How would I draw Malfoy? And he looks so much like Malfoy. You got to give it to Tom Felton, man, because that he did it so well that it really. Um, I'm gonna get another sheet of paper. We're gonna draw Malfoy. Let's see if I can draw him from memory. You know, you commit to that, and you do that, and I, the poor guy's been typecast, right? Like, let's be honest. I don't, I mean, when's the last time you saw Tom Felton in a show? And would you ever think he was a nice guy on top of it? I know, and everyone reason. said he was really nice. Yeah. Didn't Emma Watson come out and say she had a crush on him? I thought I read that somewhere. Someone Could correct me. We watched a lot of the behind Someone, the yeah, someone correct me or can collab corroborate or, or debunk that theory. We have not been to Galaxy's Edge yet. No, I don't. I've got weird feelings about that. I, I'm sorry. It's because it's so not. It's like that. On the other hand, you just want to be Moss Eisley and 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 you know the the Han Solo's Millennium Falcon, and you want to go in that cantina. And the fact that they like reinvented everything, it's just it's odd to me. Feel free to post what house you're in. Just out of curiosity. Oh yeah, Malfoy. I I don't know how she describes him in the book. I love in the first first see him, his hair's all slicked back. When he's little. Oh my oh god, my he's god. so when good. He's little Malfoy. Little Malfoy, he's like Potter. <laughs> some of us Potter. are pure blood. <laughs> Weasley. He just he was so pure good at blood. kind of spitting out the words. He really did a good job. I mean, that's it. You get a good villain. Hufflepuff in the house. And it's he's got an interesting arc if you think about it because his arc is is one of that he's a coward. Whoa, Slytherin, Susie, come on. <laughs> oh, I'd give him this kind of, that kind of hair. Oh, I like that. That kind of used car salesman kind of. And if any of you are actual used car salesmen, I mean it in the <laughs> tropiest way, not the you really are. Baby mouth boy. We're, oh, by the way, just so you guys know, we are a family of Gryffindor. All we this. are. We took it. I thought Hufflepuff. I thought that's what I was going to end up as. I figured I had Hufflepuff-esque tendencies, but... I don't think so. 
Hmm. Anyway, that's maybe someone will nice. use that real slicked. Falcon ride is so so. We heard that the Millennium Falcon ride. Yeah, I heard you get really barfy. A lot of people get even if you don't normally get uh, motion sick. It's kind of lame, right? I mean, the idea like you're you're just watching that screen. I mean, it sounds cool because in theory you're like what? you get to fly the Falcon. I like, get to fly the Falcon. That sounds amazing, but then yeah, everyone's. Everyone's like one and done. You do it once. You don't feel the urge to like, let's go again. Especially when you go on all the Harry Potter rides, like Escape from Gringotts. I mean, that's awesome. Although I have heard whatever the, what's the new ride? Rise of the Resistance? Yeah, I've heard that's insane. Amazing. Yeah, I heard that's pretty insane. They'll get it. They'll figure it out. They always do. Where are my Gryffindors at? Air horn sounds. Burr, 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 Alfonso. And then oh. just, I would do, and I would just do Crab and Goyle, like these big, he's all angles, right? He's all, like, I'd even push the angles here. So these are all, all these, like, sharp, you know what I mean? Like, you get all the sharpness in them. There's nothing warm or round. But then the funny thing is, Crab and Goyle, I would do, like, these really broody, kind of thuggy, Yes, Jason, I did see that. Um, Which I guess that's kind of how they cast them. They are doing, I think they're going to be reading the Sorcerer's Stone. They've got a bunch of celebrities. They're going to be reading the Sorcerer's Stone on the Harry Potter page, which is also on Spotify. And uh, yes, Daniel Radcliffe is reading chapter one today. I saw that. Wow, that's a big honking deal, huh? Five, five. All right, a little Malfoy. Just a slight diversion. And it's still not that great because I'm not fully warmed up. Anyway. Wait, Amanda, you haven't read Harry Potter? Uh, Just do the audio while you work. Can you take someone out of Drawn a Fantasy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can um, you? I kid. <laughs> All right, we did a little uh, Granville. That was fun. I'm going to switch gears now that my brain's a little warmer. Um, this is another, and Emily, I have tons Emily of these. Emily said she's having a lag. I'm going to see. So could be watching. Uh, I'm going to see if she's online too. Oh, it's looking Because cool. I got it too on mine. Do you? Yeah. So here's a, um, here's a, uh, another Dover book. And I, wh why I buy these is because of this. That's how much that cost when I bought it. Come on. I mean, honestly, how much was the Grand Bill? I, I, I ended up getting this one, I think, used. But I think it was originally also like nine dollars. It was it was under ten dollars. Anyway, um, are you on uh, which Wi-Fi are you on? Yeah, I don't know. I can't if I if I um, pop out, it's gonna shut me off. All right. So anyway, this cool. one is really cool. This has got like a lot of Hieronymus Bosch type stuff in it. Um, it's from fifteen sixty five, so we're going way back. But come on. Are you like where do I start? Just so you know, it is super laggy. Like I just switched our thing, so I don't know if you want to. Is it? it they're saying it's freezing and having lag. All right. So I don't know if you want to sign out and sign back in. We're gonna lose a bunch of people if I do it. Um, it's a, well, you guys will come back, right? We're gonna try it. Okay. Let me see if I can do it without going ending it. I don't. I think it's going to. Oh yeah. I don't know, but I know I'm on the right. Wi-Fi. I mean, the only thing I can tell you is to ask Soph and see if Soph's streaming something right now. Mm. Okay. Dave Peterson says this is fine. Yeah, that's the other possibility is it's regional. Dave Peterson, are you seeing these? Like, it's like Jeremy Bastion's DNA exposed, right? Like, this kind of thinking is just, oh, man, there's just so, and it's creepy. Don't get me wrong, but I'm going to go through and see if I, oh, look at that. So good. I'm drawing that. It's, it's, well, yeah, okay. I'm drawing it. Moving her over here. This, so this is it, man. I go back. I probably haven't cracked this book open in over a year. And I just find something and go, oh, I got to draw that. And then, so he, it's doing a couple things, Ange. It's not only am I getting warmed up, it's expanding my visual vocabulary. I'm at a point now where I can retain some of this stuff. And if I'm asked to draw, say I was asked to draw a witch, some point down the road, there's aspects of this character. What was the wink for? Oh, yeah. I can't for, that, for a secret thing. Yes. I feel so bad, but <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if I, have to, if I had to draw, say, a witch, 
I have this crazy reference that I could, you know, it may come out of my subconscious. It may not even be something I'm consciously. Could you get a repeat name of the illustrator? I don't know who the illustrator is. I'm embarrassed to say I don't know. Let's find out. We're going to find out together. It was uh, in 1565, 12 years after the death of Rabelais, there appeared a volume of illustrations entitled Les Songs Dralatiques de... I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> and it's really long anyway. The humorous dreams of Pantagruel, wherein are contained many figures from the imagination of Master Francois Rabelais, his last work for the amusement of the good spirits. There we go. It's Rabelais. It's a Dover book. This cost me a whopping $4.95, and we're on page eight, and I already stopped and said I got to draw this. This book is just solid. It's just like little Hieronymus Bosch characters. And even, you know, you could do that just like we did the other day. You could just draw the silhouette and then fill the silhouette with different information. But it just gets me thinking. It gets me excited. And this works for me. It may not work for you, the exercise may work for you. It may not be this artist. You may find this stuff creepy and weird. Um, so for you, it may be looking at, you know, horses, Amanda Putnam Holman. Yeah, horses, or or you know, so, you know, for uh, man, I don't, I'm out of uh, I don't Renaissance know. Renaissance attire, or yeah, whatever, whoever it is. Whatever you're into. I'm gonna switch it up because I don't have. I know I'm always saying, draw beyond the paper, but I'm going to just try what happens if I just squash her a little bit. Let's see. Julie said, very handmade still. That is kind of right, the whole weird thing that's going on. Very fashionable with that high-low dress. Yeah, right? It's so bizarre. I At can't... least C. Martin already posted it to the reference. There podcast. you go. Is it still in print, I wonder? That's the other thing I realize. A lot of these Dover books are, are no longer in print. Can I also take a moment? Take to many. To say how awesome the art is looking on the Drawn to Fantasy fan page. Ooh, take, take many moments. good stuff. Hold on. I'm actually going to reference it really quick because it has been... I'm like so impressed by all of this awesome art. And I'm embarrassed to say, I looked at stuff on the weekend, but I didn't yesterday and I haven't today. I will try to later. I just, it's been... And if we don't like something, by the way, it's not because we don't like it. It's because we're not able to head over as often as we would like to. Yeah. I will say, guys, we're up to almost 450 members. That's cool. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. If you're not familiar with it, Emily C. Martin has drawn the Drawn to Fantasy fan group. They're fans of fantasy. It's drawn to fantasy. Fans of Tony DiGiulese is drawn to fantasy art stream. And their artists post. Maybe somebody can post art. it in the uh, comments. Yeah, artists post uh, what they're working on. Um, oh, and Rebecca Thornburg. Thornburg. Thornburg is taking orders. So awesome of her for anyone who wants a t-shirt or tote with the drawn to fantasy logo. I mean, how awesome is that? That we designed, you can watch this get designed real time back in episode, what, 10 maybe? It's pretty far back. Yep. You go back on my videos page, they're Rebecca, all there. And like, got it, just getting it all printed up, that's so cool. Yeah, I gave her total permission, I was like, just go nuts. We're all in this together. If this, if this makes someone happy, if it makes Rebecca Thurnberg happy, that's awesome. If she can sell it and make somebody else happy, also good. The old Alzheimer's are insane. Yeah, there's been so many. I'm still getting at people posting Alzheimer's. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Even uh, Inktober uh, picked up the drawings I did where, was it last week where I redrew Soph's drawing in my childhood drawing? Yep. So if you're not familiar with Inktober, it was started by uh, an artist named Jake Parker where during the month of October, he gave you a set of prompts and um, encouraged people to pick up a pen and draw in ink again. And um, and golly, just a, it's amazing. It's really hitting like phenomenon levels now of participants. I participated in it last year, drew a ton of D&D &D critters and scenarios. And uh, so they have a their own social media and they posted... Um, they picked up all the, the drawings from last week and shared those. So I thought that was pretty cool. Even though they weren't really drawn in ink. They were just pencil. Everybody's so cool. But I, I'm just loving seeing so many different styles. 
Oh my gosh, she's wearing a straight jacket. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the sleeves are connected. So there's that going on. And then a, you know, a low high dress, as you do. Uh, there was a Dante question. Sorry, Alfonso. I popped over to Drawn to Fantasy, so I might have missed that. Oh, yeah, the Dante question. Hold on. Uh, bear with me two seconds. I will answer your Dante question. But to do that... I know, Rebecca. So awesome of you to do that. That was so sweet. I love, love, love my tote. I'm looking forward to when I can actually bring it to the grocery store with me because in Massachusetts, we're not allowed to bring our own grocery bags. Yeah, why'd they stop that, Ange? Were they just saying... I don't know, maybe they don't want your, like, germs from your house okay, going um, to the grocery store. They just want... Okay. <laughs> this was Alfonso's question? Yeah. Okay, Alfonso. You asked Dante, who is the manticore in the upcoming Kenny and the Book of Beasts, who has a very clearly a scorpion tail, very clearly a lion head, no wings. This was a big point of discussion not too long ago. Somebody was like, manticores have wings. I'm like, no, nah, not always. And then there's a manticore depicted... Though the Grace kids never find one, there's a manticore depicted in Spiderwick's field guide. And wouldn't you know, I don't remember where it is. The Slepicons, is it here? Elves? LM? Nope, jumps to sprites. Okay, so it's not there. You know, I could look in the front, Ange. That's not going to be there. <laughs> sky's not in the sky. At night? Do it the old-fashioned way. Manticore! <laughs> it was after the leprechaun. I was right. I missed the page. Okay, so this manticore... Well, here, i tell you why. That's a fairy tale manticore. This is what a real manticore looks like. Does that answer your question? Um, no. It, uh, they're two different depictions. And this is actually a great thing because it, it's two different types of stories. Spiderwick is all about what does the real thing look like, right? Kenny and the Dragon, it's a, it's, let's be honest, there's a talking rabbit driving a car. So it's more, it's more like, animated. That is not an accurate dragon, right? No. That is just... No. Like, so this is more accurate. It's based on uh, monkeys and... Uh, uh, I can't remember what the cat was. It might have been like an ocelot or that weird long-legged cat. I can never remember. And then the quills are more like a porcupine quills. And this is um, very similar to Top Cell's um, 1914, is it? No, 1607 etching of a manticore. However, however, if you look into bestiaries, and I think this one reprint, hey, look, uh, voila, another Dover book. Semantic. Manticore 65. And that's right here. Let's look at some more manticores. So this one's from the 17th century. It does have wings. Has more of a devil tail. Pretty fanciful. There's the top cell. Here's one. Has no, no, just bird feet and no, no uh, tail. It has a t that's that a pretty a classic tail? one. Well, like not, no, like no a... stinging tail. No. And like horns. I don't even know. Something going on there. Um, this is a pretty classic one. From a 12th century bestiary. He has just a fanciful tail. And a hat. That one has a hipster face. Yeah, that's the one we used in Spiderwick. Because it felt like something that uh, Spiderwick would have found. <laughs> this guy, I mean... I saw that guy at Whole Foods earlier. <laughs> <laughs> was he hoarding all the toilet paper? He was. He was. And the, This is another manticore. <laughs> also with, with wings and... Uh, and no uh, tail. So the point being that, it, it, according to mythology and folklore, the manticore does have a singing tail, but there was different types, which Arthur Spiderwick would have interpreted as, oh, there's different genus and species of manticore. One has a, uh, can uh, launch a volley of quills, uh, like, like a, um, a porcupine, and the other would have a singing tail like a scorpion. Hopefully that answers your question. That is a long-winded way, but you know what? He waited. He waited, and hopefully he was satisfied with that answer. James Modulin, welcome. Welcome, James. All right, I'm going to move on. I'm done with her. I'm, I'm moving on. i got to find more things. Today we're talking about what to draw when, when you have to get yourself inspired. When Maybe when you're distracted. Maybe when you just need to do a warm-up. Yeah. Look at that. That's having a bad day. 
looking for oh wow bucket guy and he's bleeding wow he's like a bleeding bucket wow, whoever wins the junk pot today is gonna get some nightmares <laughs> get some nightmare fuel <laughs> this fish guy is pretty awesome i'm going with him i'm gonna go with this fishy dude i like him a lot david may welcome david may all right let me see if i can let's uh i'm moving past the, the lady i wasn't uh I wasn't as inspired on that one as i want and i'm still just kind of James Modulin got his junk pot. Oh, good. Congrats. He said it was awesome. Good. Glad you like it. All right, here we go. Uh, just so you know, Eduardo, you were asking to what the difference? get an ISBN number of both the books of Creatures showed today. I think Emily linked those at the Drawn to Fantasy fan page. If she didn't, I will jump on later and post them, the titles and everything. Bleeding every... Bucket Guy. You guys want me to draw a Bleeding Bucket Guy? <laughs> He's so I like this fish guy instead. I'm just gonna do fish guy. I like him. He's got like a really. Oh, yeah. He's kind of interesting. Trout mouth. He's got a total trout mouth, and he's got. Uh, okay, so here's what. Here's the thing. Do I give him a fish head, or do I give him a human head with fish-like features? Hmm? That's kind of cool. And I. I love his kind of tattered. Type. I love that he carries a pair of scissors. Those have got to be plus one scissors. Also, you know, for those who are new to Drawn to Fantasy, feel free to ask questions. I know we have a lot of super fans who come every single day, and I also want to encourage those who are new here or who usually don't ask questions. Feel free to lob something out at us. Oh, Kaylee Ann Lewis cleaned her room, moved all the furniture just so she could hang her junk pot on the wall. Oh, nice. What did you get, Kaylee Ann? I, 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 I wish I could remember what everyone gets, but I, I frantically try to f make sure it, it makes the mail the following day. So it's usually uh, <laughs> in and out of my memory banks pretty fast. So I hope it was something worthy of... Of hanging on your on your walls. Bleeding bucket guy seems like a, like a, a Ren Fair like performance. It's thirty the minute Ren Fair Fair performance. It's yeah. bleeding bucket guy. Yeah, it's very Ren. Yeah, 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 yeah. I call you all to watch the bleeding bucket guy perform. <laughs> and he wears a bucket and he like sticks knives into it. He's like, it's a magic trick. I'm not really bleeding. It's wine, you see. <laughs> oh, well, drat! It really is blood. I missed. Oh, got an artery. Oh, Valerie Anderson. We all want the junk pot, but having these live streams is the best prize. Oh, Ooh. the more you know. Ding. Ding. Dean Baxendale got your electric bill. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's good. I'm he. I don't know what this is, but I'm going to turn it into an instrument. I like the idea that he's playing a weird Susian horn. That's how I'm interpreting it, Ange. How about that? I like it. You like that? Mm -hmm. Now, he looks really... This guy looks stressed. He's like, there's just too many days of social distancing. He's done. He's like, I'm going to learn to play the bassoon. Tony? Yes? Emily Juster wants you to know that Tori is a Hufflepuff. Oh! <laughs> I hope right. she has robes. Jason Stone. Jason Stone. In a movie... Who would be your picks to voice Kenny, Ooh. Graham, and Dante? Ooh, that's a good question. I like how he thinks. Uh, Graham is um, like an Ian McKellum, very stately British with a little flair. So Graham? Oh, oh uh, Patrick Stewart? Mm-hmm. Patrick Stewart could do it. Who, wait, who was the other one? Who was the other? Hmm. I mean, Way I back when, when I wrote him. Who did Scar. Oh, Jeremy, Jeremy Irons. Irons. Yeah. He's got an awesome voice, too. He doesn't have to be evil sounding like Scar. He's just got a cool No, he's got to be... He's got to be... Mark Hamill and Jason Momoa. Yeah. Man, well, yeah, that's, there's that. Kevin Sylvester said. Yeah. Um, he could do Kenny, even though he's like a grown man. He still could do like a little kid voice. Yeah, he's just a, Kenny's just like a little kid, you know? He's just like a little kid voice. And um, you could, like, yeah, the idea of, like, um, of Graham and Dante having very similar sounding, I think Dante would, would be interesting to have him be a little more, um, 
like a like a uh, um, Jeremy Irons. Well, Ian McCallum and Patrick Stewart are really good friends. Well, they're done, done and done. I there think they are. That would be awesome That's it. Together. That's it. Oh, David Howe. I've watched some other artists' quarantines live streams, and as good as they may be, they're not as fun to draw and defend. Aww. That is awesome. That is awesome. And Tom Hoffelder said, Kazan just the wild card. <laughs> do they have a theme song? Yeah, do they have a theme song? I was going to make this do guy... Do they give a... things away, or do they just hoard their artwork? I was going to make this guy an f- actual fish, but now I'm going to see if I can actually make him like a human... With fish-like features, like a big kind of, oh, I don't what's know. What's his name would be good, too. Um, Originally, we thought... Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Um, he's Doctor Who. He was yeah. Doctor... Uh, you guys know. You guys know. That guy. Doc- Doctor Strange. Yeah. He's got to be in his name. Does it begin with the B or... Last name begins with the B or the first name begins with the B? What's his name, guys? Oh, there's, I'm sure someone has said. No, not yet. No, but... He'd be good. Yeah, he'd that be. guy. Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict. I mean, is that not an awesome name? Graham would be like, "That's fun to say, Cumberbatch." <laughs> what is, is a like, Cumberbatch? Tell me, it's a type of cookie. Is it like a Cumberbun? <laughs> Should I be wearing one when I speak to you? <laughs> how about now? And how about now? <laughs> Did the feed stop? Somebody said it. Oh. It, it paused for a second, but it's it's. Hanging in there. It's still Sir Troutmore, yes. Dave Peterson does not have a theme song or an Ange, but I stole your idea to give away, give away recycling. Nice. Awesome. Pay it forward. Benedict Cumberbatch. See, I'm I'm cold. This guy's like, see the face? It's mm, meh. He needs to be fish face. I don't you want to do it? You don't want a human? Face. All right, back to fish. Anybody. I mean, uh, anyone, anyone can. could draw a human faced one, but you're Tony D. And I, therefore, it should be a fish. <laughs> glub glub. Matt Schuler, we had a combo about houses. We are all Gryffindor here. Nice. Tom Hiddleston would be good too. I agree with that. That's good. Yeah. But it's no Benedict Cumberbatch. Well, who is? <laughs> Tom Hiddleston. David Tennant might be good for a laugh, yes, yes. Originally, I, when they did the audiobook, I asked for Eddie Izzard, remember, to read the audiobook. Yes. And he wasn't available. He was on tour, I think. And so they got um, Cummings, Alan Cummings, <laughs> to do it. Alan Cummings, if you guys haven't heard he did the a great audio, job. he did a great job. He did a fantastic job. Yeah, he did a great job. Michael Fassbender. All good. These are all good. Ooh, Micah, good question. Who would play T and Ange in a movie about the Deets or Lizzie? Oh, wow. Well, you know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I need your opinions on this. Is Rick Moranis going to come out of retirement? <laughs> I mean, DiCaprio's busy, so I know that's not going to happen. Eddie Izzard? Wait, is still Eddie? Wait for. <laughs> no. I don't wear high heels, at <laughs> least, you know, not on camera. Mm, Gimli. Tom Holland is Kenny. What's his name from 300 that we talked about? Oh, that poor guy. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know, poor guy. Maybe he's, he was, maybe it was for a role, Ange. I don't know who would play us. I don't know. We're characters already. Yeah, really. think of when I oh Tom Hanks plays Tony oh oh we can tell him the Tom that, that's a story we can tell him the Tom Hanks story what's the Tom Hanks story I was almost on Jimmy Kimmel oh, as a oh gosh that's good we got contacted this was literally weeks before the quarantine wasn't it Angie it was I feel like it was all it was earlier this year the same actors as Molly and Arthur Weasley <laughs> Oh my God! Wait, that's what Soph. What's that's what she always says. She's like, oh, there's there's Dad, and it's just Arthur Weasley. There's Dad in his sweater, and I'm like, you know, I mean, I like Arthur Weasley, so I'll I'll take it as a compliment. Jason Momoa. Hey, well, he and I are often mistaken for one another. Um. Yeah, we got contacted by a producer from the Jimmy Kimmel Show, and Tom Hanks was going to be on the show, 
and he must have been, what was he, was he promoting the Mr. Rogers movie? Or it must have been some, another movie. Uh, maybe he's in another movie. No, he was promoting the Mr. Rogers movie. And they were going to do a, a bit no, where. No, wait, 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 wait. Let's rewind. Oh. Don't. Okay. I'm going to, po- I'm also going to post this to Drawn to Fantasy in case you don't follow me on social media. If you follow me oh, on Oh, that's Instagram, right. Yes, that's right. That's how you would know about this. So on Instagram, my Instagram, I had seen a photo of Tom Hanks doing promotion for the Mr. Rogers movie. And this photo, I thought, looked a heck of a lot like Tony. So I was like, Tony, let me take a picture of you. Pose, do this. Do this. So I set out the lighting, and I'm like, look out the window. Here's the angle. And I took a photo, and I tweeted Rita Wilson, and I said, FYI, I married your husband. And then hashtag Tom Hanks, hashtag Rita Wilson, hashtag Castaway, hashtag Big. Um... And then I put it on my Instagram as well. And then... I get an email from a producer from Jimmy Kimmel. This is like two months, three months ago. I know. I know. And the, and it was the producer said, we're thinking about doing a bit where we do all the... We've, we're going to try to find all these Tom Hanks lookalikes. Would you be interested in being in the gag? And I was going to do a Brady Bunch that's, style skit. Yes. And it was going to be all these different Tom Hanks lookalikes. And I said, I'm totally in. And then it, and Wait, then it didn't happen. Hold ha- on, I have to show you guys. Actually, then, I can show you. I don't have just have to post it. You're all watching. I didn't. So this was the original photo of Tom on my Hanks. Instagram of Tom Hanks. And then I posted <laughs> that one. <laughs> and that is how Tony got contacted by the Jimmy Kimmel show oh to be gosh. a Tom Hanks lookalike. I wish. I wish oh, yeah, I looked I like the Hankster. And I did. I think I married Tom Hanks. Hasht- or at Tom Hanks. Hashtag Tom Hanks. Hashtag twinning. Hashtag bosom buddies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the not as successful and attractive younger cousin. <laughs> you know what, guys? Fun fact, though. Tom Hanks optioned the spider and the fly 100 million years ago. Remember that? True. He was going to make a movie of it. You only live once. Go for it. Why not? Yeah, that's true. You never know. I'll tell you a funny story. This is my theory, and this confirmed my... Yes, he looks better, Fish Huddy. I'm going to play the... What's he playing? Bassoon. <laughs> Dad joke for the win. Dang, that was good. Was that good? Was that good? Did you like that? You guys like that? Yeah. He doesn't know how to play it. I'm a fish. I've never had hands. <laughs> well, I don't even know what to do with these things. <laughs> I'm getting into them. So when I'm warming up, I'm getting there. So, here's the thing. So, Tony and I are on a plane. (laughs) This is many years ago. When you could ride planes. When you could fly on a plane. Do you remember the long, long lost days of flying on aeroplanes? Those buses of the sky. Those petri dishes in the air. And you didn't even care. You didn't care. You didn't wash your hands. Yeah, maybe you'd lick your hands after you touch that little tray table in front of you. Oh, now you you (laughs) shudder when you think of it. (laughs) Just no clarinets. Oh. That is from Jason. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Indeed. Is this guy Finnish? <laughs> you guys are so That's good. That's good. Keep them coming. Here. Keep them coming. I, I like never it. never had hands or elbows. Ooh, elbows. Hmm. He's playing the il- il- elbow. Yeah, that's what he's right. playing. That does deserve the slide whistle. Yeah, he's playing the elbow. Ooh, he's got like spurs on. What is he riding that he needs spurs? But I'm giving him to him. Oh, Boom. and right? that's it. The wild card, she just, just played it. Hello, that's why I'm the art director. So saith Hoffelder, there it is. She's the wild card. Or was it Dave Peterson? I don't remember. Anyway, I'm almost done with the Bassomatic okay, here. So this is me, you guys, just so you know how kooky pants I am. I am the person, I will talk to anybody. That's why when we were talking about yesterday... Like, what if you saw a celebrity? Like, I would go up and talk to them. I don't care because I know. You're never going to Cele- see them. Celebr- I'm never going to see them again. And B, celebrities are pre- people just like you and me. Yeah, when you saw Wiener Dog, you screamed her name across the street. <laughs> yeah, there was a movie called Happiness. It's very dark and twisted. Not for kids. Not for kids. Um, I forgot. That's a very, what that's very from. dark sense of humor. And there's a character in it. Her name's Wiener Dog. And I saw her on the streets of New York. And I ran up to her screaming Wiener Dog. And she kind of froze, terrified. Froze, and then, then we actually talked for a while. 
Yeah, she was... And she, I said, oh my gosh, how often do people run up to you on the street and yell wiener dog? And she was like, um, you're the first. And I was like, yes. Yes. Yep. So, All right, fishy fishkins. But here, here it is. So I, this is how I know why not. Just take a chance. Just say yes. Just ask. Like, you have to do it. So I'm on an airplane. We're flying to New York. Oh, I know what story this yeah. is. This is a good story. We're flying to New York. Oh. Wow, look at that. So I got an upside down face. Yeah. Um, in the row in back of us. In back. In back of us. Back. Is Billy Ray Cyrus. Okay. In back. Now, I will say we were flying to New York because Tony was going to be on the Today Show. So Al Roker had chosen Tony's book, The Search for Wundla, as his Al's book club pick. When they did such things. They don't yes. even do that anymore. So uh, we were super, super excited on the plane. We're just flying high, literally. Um, and of course, what do we do? We sprung for first class. We're going to be on the Today Show. Come on. Now, keep in mind, I worked on the Today Show. So it was really, really this kind of special moment, right? So here I am, and the whole time I'm thinking, okay, how do I pretend I'm on my phone, of course, to snap a picture of Billy Ray Cyrus, to then post to my social media, blah, 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 blah. And then I was like, but I can't. So the whole flight goes on, and we stand up, we come, we land in New York. We're all getting, everyone's we're getting, all our, getting off. We're all and, getting our luggage. And... No, not yet. We are in the plane still. Yeah. And I turn... Oh, yeah, from overhead. From yeah. Department. So yeah. I turn and look at Billy Ray Cyrus. Now, at this point, am I going to say hi to Billy Ray? No, I don't think... Now, what... Um, Miley was in the news for a lot of stuff at that point. She had kind of had some weird public meltdown. So, of course, it's kind of strange when you know, like, oh, I know what's going on with your kid because she's, you know... A celebrity like he is so I'm just kind of standing there we're getting our luggage and he looks at me and says do I know you <laughs> and I was like um I don't know do you and he said did you used to do you work on good morning America and I said no but I used to work on the today show he goes that's where I remember you from and I was like oh my gosh so then I start telling him the story of the fact that we are going back to the Today Show, you know, because I used to be a makeup artist on the Today Show, and now my husband is going to be on the Today Show for his book, and I'm telling him the whole thing, and he's totally into it. He was and totally he cool. Was so cool. And I said, you know, it's just, it really is so meaningful because it's just a full circle moment. And he looked at me and went, it's a full circle moment in the universe, baby. He did say that. And I was like, yes, it is. Yes, it is is and I, ne I didn't ask for a photo or anything i no. did sneak a sneaky photo of him going down the escalator uh, <laughs> because you know i had to he had his guitar case with him and everything yeah but it's so good did like, he sing a achy break yeah, your heart he sang achy break your heart but i just love that like i could have either not said anything to him and and not had that moment or you fine. Could, yeah. Or I could just say something. Or just like, say hi. Yeah, or just said hello. But even then, I was like... Nope, not going to happen. Like the time that I stalked John Waters. Oh, my God. You got to save that for tomorrow. Yeah, you don't I'll have enough time. That's John another Waters one. story tomorrow. It occurs to me, we have more of these stories than I thought. I don't know. I don't. I feel. Do you have any fun, interesting stories? And I'm always like, eh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It's funny that a lot of. I mean, not all of them include celebrities. It is. Well, just but that's funny. been the running theme for the last couple of days. It's good. Yeah. Look oh, at this yeah, guy. I love a sneaky photo. I'll totally put me. I hold it up to my ear and pretend I'm on the phone, and then I turn my head in the direction, like opposite direction, then I snap the photo. Wow! Really? Yeah. I would hate that if someone was taking a uh, sneaky photo of me. And I've had that happen. I would just be like, can I get a photo with you? I would just prefer that. Now, listen, they're in a different world. They're in like... Yeah, they're, they can won't I, go anywhere. George R.R., R., remember he said he fell asleep waiting for an airplane, his plane to come, and woke up and somebody was taking a photo. <laughs> someone he literally, was taking a selfie with him. He just literally like blinked open. Well, he was asleep. That's pretty lousy. Right? Full That's, circle moment. Billy Ray Cyrus's new single. 
Yeah, it should have been. I love that it was full circle moment in the universe, baby. It's like if Elvis gave you, like, it was like a... Oh, you should have told him that. He oh, would have loved so that, good. huh? You're like Elvis. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. Oh, my moment of almost celebrity is that I miss seeing Tony at the Mint Museum. Oh. We're going to have more stuff. We'll have more stuff. We'll have more. The Rockwell was well, working on trying to get that in another museum, and then listen, everything went. Listen, we're all going to meet at Alfonso's wedding. So That's you know, a, it's okay. There it is. <laughs> I really like this guy. Now, I may, like, really figure out how to uh, get out of his... The way he drew it, Rabelais drew it, and actually tried to figure out how to really draw it, if that makes any sense. But I'm definitely getting inspired. You can see my line work's getting more energetic. It's like you guys can name any celebrity and we have a funny story about them. Oh, my gosh. Not really. It's just we're, we're you know, we're burning through currency, too. Don't, uh, uh, it, we'll run out of people eventually. It's not that, that many, but yeah, you got to tell the John Waters one. That's a pretty good one. I was going to bust out my the Metallica cover today. I was going to show you guys. Oh, yeah, you should do that tomorrow. My portfolio from back in the day. It's not like uh, quarantine's going to be lifted tomorrow, Ange. Sure. You've got, you've got, a pee pod. You've got weeks with a tassel. <laughs> Very Planescape. Here, I will tell you this. Tell if me. If you see a celebrity... Who, me? I don't, I've never met a celebrity who doesn't love people telling them how much they love their work. Like, that's the entry point, for the most part. I mean, Bette Midler, she... Yeah, but mm -hmm. that's, you know. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't know. But I think she wasn't that's having it. just a, a sincere connection, right? Okay. I don't know, just saying. Yeah. I, I think, listen, I think from a lot of those people, it's not... It's 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 the constant, I think, and they feel like they have no – their life is no longer theirs. I think that's when they, they snap and that's when they – and I could – I'm not going up to the Jonas Brothers. I'm just like, you know. No, no. I mean, listen, I, I can only imagine how frustrating that must be. Yeah, you would. I don't know. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I also think like when we did the Spiderwick junket where we were promoting the film and we're hanging out with all celebrities, they're flying us first class all over the country and – and on a bunch of them went on to London and, and, and Hong Kong and everything else. And, and, and you're in the green, not the green room, the, uh, the celebrity waiting area in LAX. And then there's a ton more other celebrities and those they're introducing you to those people. It wasn't like Gwen Stefani literally oh, yeah, sitting. Gwen Stefani was there and just a good little tidbit of dirt is Gwen Stefani sat in first class and her nanny sat in coach. Oh my gosh. So to me being a little shady there. Because come on. If you're Gwen Stefani, why don't you put your nanny in first class? Yeah. Anyway, you, you can see that like that that glimpse of of life, especially promoting a film and and um you know, then you come back home and it was like, Oh, I gotta take out the garbage and do the dishes and you know what I mean? It's it's like you, you there's a real you really come, I was really coming off of it and it was very surreal because then there, I remember there were also just huge packages, packages, big boxes filled with all the spider wick, like the happy meals and the, and the, um, the video game. I remember it was just such a strange moment and I could see how people would get addicted to that, that feeling of that constant adulation and that constant kind of go, you're you know just what? going. I met. Carlos Santana and had an awesome conversation with him years before Spiderwick and we talked about specifically about celebrity because I was so blown away I was like man you have had it was when he did that um the song with the uh, Matchbox 20 Matchbox 20 um smooth yeah and Just... I was like what does this feel like for you to now have to have this like, huge resurrection you've seen it you've had everything in your career and now to have it again and he was like, you know, one of the things about celebrity, like the thing, the bottom line is don't believe the hype. Yeah. Don't believe the hype. Yeah. Like, there's always going to be a bunch. Of, it's going to fade. 
Yeah. You know, just... Even in our little world of children's books, it happens. You're the hot commodity, and everyone's talking about you, and then they move on to the next person and the next person, and then the trends change, and, you know... Um, I love this little guy. Rob Thomas, thanks. That's Rob good. Thomas. Um, Eduardo said the first time he met Tori Amos, he was peeing his pants, and she was so sweet. She is very nice. You've met her. I met Tori Amos. We have a Tori Amos story. <laughs> It's kind of crazy. <laughs> it is. It's really. I'll have to see if I can. There's oh a whole Tori God. Amos. It's a crazy Tori Amos. Well, I mean, not that she's crazy. Well, maybe she is. I don't know. But it was, no, it was just a crazy Tori Amos story because I was a huge Tori Amos fan. I think that's the thing, too. We had interactions with people who were celebrities before anybody knew your books or anything. Oh, yeah. So to also. Even when they did know my books. Pat Benatar didn't care. She was more interested in Soph's tiger drawing. No, but I'm, I'm <laughs> just saying you saw that people who were celebrities being really cool. Yeah, definitely. And that was the thing. And yeah. you realize because we've been the fans. Yes. We've been the fans. Many times. Over and over, standing and waiting in line, paying good money for our tickets. Yeah, you're waiting right. Waiting by the tour bus to meet Tori Amos. Yeah. Or, or Natalie Merchant Natalie or whoever. Or Chris Isaac or all those people that we used to sit and wait for. Yeah. And, and it you leads... remembered how Who? they interacted with people. You're right. You're right. I'm going to give this guy one. I'm going to do a real quick sketch. Ange, you think about who you want to give the junk pot to today. Okay. We'll get some stuff. We still have Star Wars left, so, I, you know. Do you want and me two or one? What just one. Want? And Liam Voss, if you're listening... Please direct message your mailing address. As I said earlier, it, Facebook is weird with the mail where, I, you know, I, I, I mark it. If I mark it to done, it just goes into the vortex. I don't know. It's in some astral plane that I can't figure out how to get to. So I need, I need, your, uh, I need your mailing address, and I'll send you your stuff from yesterday. Wow, June Gallagher. Once ran into Telly Savalas at a Broadway play. She smiled and nodded, and he said, good evening, and it was a wow moment. Oh, that's, cool. that's nice. Yeah, be a human. Be a decent dude, you know what I mean? Eduardo wants to know the Tori Amos story. How about if we save that? Please remind us for tomorrow. Remind us tomorrow, Eduardo. We'll do, we'll do the... Uh... It requires a, a couple uh, visuals to go with it, so I'll have to dig those up. Hopefully I have them here. Children's authors are amazing to me. I have more of those interactions than any movie, TV, music, celebrity, said Kate Blair Wheeler. Yeah, well, we've had, obviously, lo loads of those stories. You know, the nice thing about being, for the most part, unless you're like, you know, J.K. Rowling, is you can walk down the street and nobody knows, knows who you are. They might that. really love your work, but most yeah. of the time they don't know. Yes, what they look I love like. that, so that's too. It's nice to have the, the anonymity. Anonymity. Well, I'm a little warmed up now, Andrew. I'm feeling good. I could I could go draw a thing. Trent Reznor story. I do not. Um, I worked for Mac Cosmetics down in Soho in New York, and Trent Reznor came in, um, and he, he was just so short. <laughs> I just no. I mean, he's really tiny. I couldn't believe it. I was blown away. Like Bono. I think he's shorter than Bono. Tom Cruise. Oh, he's definitely shorter than Tom Cruise. Like, in the height, I could be wrong. But I would think it's Tom Cruise being the tallest of them, oh then Bono, God. then Trent Reznor. God, I want them. a little chart with all of them next to each other. <laughs> and they start, like, I don't know, they start with, um, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how far down you go, but it, it definitely ends with, like, the teller or pen, whoever yeah. the tall one is. Yeah. Or Momoa. Momoa's on one end, and, you know, Warwick Davis is on the other end. And I want, you know, I want to know where they're on that, that scale, on the Davis-Momoa scale. That's what the scale's called. Where does, you know, Davis is a 1, Momoa's a 10, or flip it, Momoa's a 1, Davis is a 10. Where does Reznor fall and Cruz and Bono? You, Reznor, you guys, I mean, feel free. We can also finish this discussion over on Drawn to Fantasy, like, who is, of the three at least, of Tom Cruise, hold on, I have to look it up. Cereal, no. Cereal. Hey, Siri, 
How tall is Tom Cruise? How tall is Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise is five feet seven inches tall. See, I was like, he's right about my height. There okay, you go. okay. How tall? Okay. Is, how tall is Trent Reznor? Hey Siri. How tall is Trent Reznor? Trent Reznor is five feet seven inches tall. No, he's not. Oh, no, he's not. How tall is Bono? Hey Siri. How tall is Bono? Five feet six inches tall. That I agree with. I think Trent Reznor's shorter than that. How tall is Prince? Was Prince? I was never near Prince. But no, so. Siri, I want to. Hey Siri, how tall is Prince? Prince was five feet two inches tall. Five feet two inches tall. Oh what? my God! If you told me he was six feet tall, I would have been like, Yeah, okay, sure he was. What? No, so his personality. Was tiny. The tiny chart. I know, but still, his personality was so large. Alfonso said, do you consider yourselves famous now? No. Trent Reznor is short. He's super tiny. Um, I don't think he's five foot seven. I honestly think that would be with lifts. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you've heard it here first, folks. Um, you know who else isn't super duper? Like, also <laughs> vertically challenged? <laughs> wow. No, he's not vertically challenged. I did meet Lenny Kravitz. Oh, uh -huh. And I was doing makeup for his then girlfriend, the one who was then married to um... <laughs> Momoa. No, 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 Johnny Depp. She married Johnny Depp. She was. Oh, French. she was a model. She was a French model. And um... wow, she's like, I'm sorry, Lenny, I have to break up with you because I'm dating Johnny Depp. And so I was doing makeup for her, and then standing next to me, of course, I'm trying not to bug out. Is Lenny? Lenny Kravitz. Oh my God! And I guess she was going his way. <laughs> Um, and then the Carpenters came on and he started singing the Carpenters in my ear, like standing right next to me, singing just like me, they long to be close to you in his just warm, dulcet tones, Lenny Kravitz singing to you. It was amazing. That's cool. Prince was fun sized. Yes. Vanessa Paradis. Thank you. <gasps> Prince was fun sized. Do you think he liked people telling him that? Petite prince. I'm gonna go Le with. Petite prince. I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> oh my god! It's like uh, Will F Will Will Ferrell playing elf, and he's talking to um, uh, uh, what's his face from Game of Thrones. Call me. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Ooh, you're a." You're... Call me elf one more time. Ooh, you're an angry elf. <laughs> Armager goose burps. Oh, Sue Carrero's got goose burps. Um, All right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up, Ange. Okay. Uh, oh my gosh, who am I gonna pick today, you guys? Who indeed? Wow, this. Is... Oh, that's who I'm picking. You got it. Yes. You're done. Wow. So do you need a drum roll? Yeah. Let me make sure that this person is not already on the list. They are not already on the list. Okay. You ready? I'll do the hold drum on, roll. Hold on. Oh. All right. You ready? Oh, you're getting the uh, mm -hmm. getting all the things. Mm -hmm. You're doing it. She's doing it, guys. Mm -hmm. Our hour went by so quickly, as it always does, hanging out with you all. Always goes so fast. We so had a great fast. Time. So good, you guys. All right, who's our winner? Today's winner is. Today's winner is. Jason Stone! Jason Stone! Nice, Jason Stone. Or today's winner on Drum to Fantasy. Your today's. Junk pot winner. The junk pot is yours, Jason. Jason. You Jason. guys, please help me in congratulating Jason Stone put on your, his big win. Put your hands together for Jason Stone. I'm signing it to you right now for Jason. Even if you're secretly jealous, please congratulate Jason. Because it could be you on Drawn to Fantasy. Weekdays at 3 p.m. 3 p.m. Eastern in select cities and towns. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow. Uh, we may work on Kenny and the Dragon or I may um, draw more of these weird dudes. I will post the titles of these books if you missed it. Uh, although I have a feeling Emily C. Martin has already found it, and uh, she's so incredibly efficient. You guys, so hug probably yourself. I'll post them. Ooh, hug, hug yourself! yourself for us. 
That'd be nice. Call somebody. Yeah. We, we always just say, do something nice for someone. Yeah. Call, call a friend maybe you haven't talked to, spoken to, or a coworker. Let them know you're thinking of them. We're thinking of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Stay safe. Stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow.